Hi, I'm Christina Mozafari for HIV.gov here in Montreal at the International AIDS Conference, where today we're talking about the global and U.S. domestic efforts to reach and sustain HIV epidemic control. I have the great pleasure of welcoming Ambassador John Kangasong. He's the U.S. Global AIDS Coordinator and Special Representative for Health Diplomacy. And Dr. Maureen Goodenow, she's the Director of the Office of AIDS Research at the National Institutes of Health. Welcome to you both. It's a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Ambassador, I, I want to start with you because you know a lot of the headlines around this conference have been about how the efforts to uh, to reach epidemic control have stalled. What, what's your reaction to that? It's uh, it's a reality. We saw the numbers from the UN AIDS updated report. Uh, we have seen the lowest decrease in new cases for so many years. Uh, it tells me that the response to HIV AIDS pandemic it is at a crossroad. And we need to stretch our imagination, but more importantly, recommit to the, the course. The course of ending HIV AIDS by the year 2030, which means making it less a public health threat. Uh, I think it's possible to do that. The results we are seeing in PEPFAR offers hope. Uh, we've seen that with collective efforts, about 5.5 million children have been born HIV free because of PEPFAR efforts. We've seen that last year alone, about 20 million people were put on treatment, AIDS treatment, uh, up from 17 million. We've seen the rate of self-testing of people wanting to know their status increase significantly. So there's hope despite the numbers that we, we, we are seeing that are really not uh, encouraging. Yeah. Dr. Goodenow, talk to me a little bit about how the research, the work you're doing at the NIH is informing uh, the work of PEPFAR. The interactions of what we heard um, uh, just at the PEPFAR meeting, uh, the complexity of the U.S. epidemic is, is, is significant. We've got the epidemic in the generalized population that's heavily burdened by HIV, but it's also in key populations as well. Um, and so the, uh, the, the place that we're at in the United States, uh, we certainly are not one of the 20 countries that has made remarkable progress towards epidemic control. There's uh, about 87% of people with HIV know their status in the United States, but very disappointingly is about 66% uh, uh, of um, people are not virally suppressed. Uh, or, or are virally suppressed. Um, so there's a big gap there. And I think some of the things that we heard at the PEPFAR meeting the other day were really exciting to think about how they could be uh, inform uh, some of the research and, and the public health in the United States. And one of them, for example, was the uh, youth peer groups that are being used in Uganda. Um, in Vietnam, we heard about uh, MSM youth who uh, actually, uh, you know, co-developed and co are co-implementing uh, PrEP in among MSM in Vietnam. And then the other part of that also, too, is that the, um, you know, the, in, in general, uh, similar to Botswana, the United States has an aging population of people with HIV. And Botswana has this amazing um, integrated services for thousands of their elderly people with HIV. And it's really a, 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 an interesting situation in Botswana. It's the oldest, one of the oldest epidemics. Um, but they have epidemic control. Um, and they've achieved better than 95, 95, 95. So there's, uh, I think in terms of the research going in a cycle almost of, of discoveries that are then implemented and, and basically uh, shown to work, uh, we're benefiting from, from those experiences. You know, I'd like to follow up on that with you, Ambassador, and talk to me a little bit more about you know, this, the bi-directional approach, basically helping to coordinate better, or more intently to better leverage PEPFAR's platforms. No, absolutely. Let me just, uh, first of all, comment on the Botswana scenario, because it's uh, a source of hope, and it's very inspiring, and it tells us a story that this pandemic can be defeated if uh, we show leadership, commitment and the will. And that we did not move 
from this conference with a mindset of surrender, of surrender to the virus. That would be a catastrophe. Botswana has exceeded the 95-95-95 world. The question we have to leave this conference with is, how can we make many more Botswanas out there to get to exceed that target? Now, on the bilateral, bi-directional uh, 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 interaction, I think this conference is also an opportunity to look at two types of bi-directional uh, uh, reflections. One is what the HIV lessons have taught us to fight the COVID pandemic and what the COVID pandemic lessons mean for HIV. I think we've seen a cross-fertilization of those uh, all coming together. Like the tools, the intervention tools that we've used in fighting COVID all derive from HIV experience, i.e. Uh, infection control, uh, uh, infection prevention control measures, surveillance, laboratory testing, uh, 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 and, and, uh, just tracking people that are infected. On the other hand, we've seen how, because of COVID, we reimagined the way we dispense drugs. We gave multi months uh, dispensation, which before COVID, it could have been considered impossible. Okay, and probably if you raise that up, uh, people will think you are, you, you, you are not serious. Because of COVID, we've seen how self-testing has increased because of people wanting to know their status even if. So that is a unique opportunity for bi-directional learning. We've also seen in COVID how within one year, we're able to produce a vaccine using informed by science. The, the theme of this conference is follow the science. We've seen how the remarkable progress that science enables us to understand a virus, a new virus, develop diagnostics, develop vaccines, go through a rigorous clinical trial and end up with a safe and efficacious vaccine in one year. The question we have now in the spirit of bi-directional reflection is how can we use such technology to try to accelerate vaccine uh, uh, development for HIV? Which without that, I think our goal and target of ending HIV AIDS uh, in the nearest future will continue to be challenged. I think that is one uh, by directional learning. The second thing is how can we learn from the countries that are at the front line? We've seen during this conference experiences in Nigeria, Zambia, and other places where they stretch their imagination and they say, how can we do more with less? Okay, how can we do more with less? In Nigeria, we saw just yesterday how they use the same laboratory platforms and networks that were supporting HIV to support the rollout of COVID testing in a remarkable way. Uh, we saw in Zambia where the HIV platforms the trusted platforms that PEFA put in place were used in increasing a dramatic uptake of, of uh, uh, COVID vaccination. I think they are, they've now exceeded 50% of the population vac vaccinated because of leveraging the HIV uh, platform supported by PEPFAR. So I think if we op approach this by directional reflection with an open mind, there's plenty of opportunity that the challenge that COVID has presented on us can actually enable us rather to see many more opportunities there, which can inform the HIV fight in a remarkable way. You know, Dr. Goodnow, this fall the government is host this fall the government is hosting a forum on how to better coordinate among all of the uh, US government agencies and around the world for HIV response. Can you tell me a little bit about what some of the goals are for that? Well, this is a conference or a forum that's being organized under the HHS, the Health Department of Health and Human Services, and it does, as you mentioned, carry uh, include uh, a vast array of not only government partners, but partners from uh, extramural research, from industry, from the private sector, from community is most important um, uh, in this, and the goal is to really um, evaluate how we can capitalize on this bi-directional uh, uh, advances that, that um, John just mentioned and how can we uh, really, um, you know, accelerate getting to where we want to go in terms of 
the research area. Some of the research is also pivoting because we heard from the PEPFAR program about the need for more behavioral and social science research, uh, implementation science research, and importantly, communication science research so that we can get the message out that's accurate, that is uh, uh, informative, and that people can understand uh, what, what is being offered and what advantages they have for taking care of their health. Yeah, Ambassador, last word to you. Uh, there have been so much talk of innovations and new strategies for implementation, hope, and the conference isn't even over yet, and, and this may be a little unfair of me to ask you to speculate, but what do you think we'll be talking about at this conference again two years from now? That is a very difficult question because, um, as you and I know, uh, it's always risky to predict the future. I think most of the time, uh, I would say in 80% of the time, we fail to predict the future. But let me risk this and say that in two years from now, we'll be discussing how to narrow the gaps between innovation and uptake of innovation. I think in two years, we are going to see a lot of good products out there, products, products that are affordable, and the question will become how do you narrow the gap between mm -hmm. getting those new, those new products into programs, into interventions that will create an impact and, and continue to beat the virus and, and shape the curve. Thank you so much to both of you for talking to us today. Thank, Thank you. you.